Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going and taking a deeper look into frequency and period as it relates to waveforms, mostly AC waveforms. In the last video, we went through like a basic introduction to waveforms and went over their different types. So if you haven't seen that video and you're new, you're new to this kind of thing, then go back and watch that video. If I remember to, I'll link it here. But if you have watched that video, let's get started. So we're going to go into a bit more detail in this video. There's going to be a little bit more maths. So, but nothing to be scared of really. I mean, it's all pretty basic math. So let's just quickly go over what is frequency and period. So frequency is denoted with an F, right? And period is denoted with a capital T. Period is measured in seconds. And frequency is measured in Hertz. So the way to look at them is one of them is cycles per second. And the other one is seconds per cycle. So frequency is how many cycles occur per second. And period is seconds per cycle. The period is how many, how much time in seconds does it take to do one cycle? Whilst frequency is how many cycles occur per second. So as you can see, they are closely related and there's a very simple way of converting between the two. Before we go into converting them, let's just get a bit more of an understanding of what it means. So let's say we had a, a, a frequency of one hertz. What does that mean? That means one cycle per second, right? Okay, so what does it mean to have one T? It means that one cycle takes one second to complete. Okay, so the hertz, it takes, you, you're getting one cycle per second. With the period, you're getting one cycle, and that one cycle takes a whole second to complete. So that could be confusing. You can see how they, they, seem, they seem very similar. So let's just increase it. Let's go to two hertz. So if you've got two hertz, what does that mean? That means that you're getting two cycles per second, right? So what does 2t mean? Right, you're not getting two cycles. You're getting, it takes one cycle, two seconds to complete. You see the difference? Let's carry on. So let's go to 10 hertz. It means that you're getting 10 cycles per second. So in one second, you've got 10 cycles. What does 10t mean? It means it takes one cycle, 10 seconds to complete. Okay, how about, um, let's go 5 gigahertz. <laughs> the hard large number, what does that mean? So, you might recognize 5 gigahertz from your Wi-Fi. We have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So, 5 gigahertz, as a signal, as a waveform, it means you get 5 billion cycles per second which is mad, right? Okay, how about 0 0.002 T? What does that mean? It means that one cycle takes 0 0.002, and you can actually just replace that with, in terms of seconds, two milliseconds to complete. So hopefully now you can see the difference. When you look at it in terms of one hertz and one T, they seem similar. Obviously one hertz is one cycle per second. One T means that it takes one cycle. It takes one second for one cycle to complete. However, even when I'm saying it, I'm about to get confused as I'm saying it. But when you go a bit further down, for example, looking at 10 hertz, you get 10 cycles per second. While with 10 T, you're getting one cycle every 10 seconds. Cool. Okay, so... As you can see, they are very closely related. So in terms of converting between the two, frequency and period are just the inverse of each other. So if you wanted to find the frequency, then you just do one over the period. And if you wanted to find the period and you have the frequency, then you just do one over the frequency. They're literally just the inverse of each other. All right, so let's do an example. Okay, so we've got, what is the period of 50 Hertz waveform? So. We've got the, we want to find the period and we've got the frequency. So we just do one over frequency, which is going to be equal to one over 50. And if we use our calculator, 
1 divided by 50 is equal to 0 0.02. And remember that this is in seconds. So 0 0.02 seconds. And so if you wanted to convert, you could put that as 20 milliseconds. So a 50 hertz waveform has a 20 milliseconds period. Okay, so let's do one more example. So let's try and find the frequency of an AC signal with a period of, let's go 10 milliseconds at a time. So you could actually work it out from the previous question, but that's fine. We'll do it the, the long way. So we want to find the frequency and that's going to be equal to one over the period. And we know that the period is 10 milliseconds. You don't want to put that in your, into your calculator. You want to do 0 0.01 for seconds. And then we can use the calculator again. 1 divided by 0 0.01. And that gives you 100. So you get 100 hertz. So an AC signal of 10 that has a period of 10 milliseconds, meaning that it takes 10 milliseconds for it to complete one cycle, has a frequency of 100 hertz. Okay, let's do a slightly more complex one because whenever I'm studying these things, I like to go a little bit deep because the, the questions or the questions and everything else is always quite deep. So let's do if an AC voltage, trying to keep it wordy, has a frequency of 1200 hertz, then how long is the time? period there's just a bunch of words right all we care about is what's we've got the hertz right and so we want to find the time period so we just do time period is equal to one over 1200 this is going to be a tiny number can any of you do that in your head one divided by 1200 all right so you get 0 0.00083 recurring okay let's we'll just put another three there okay so this is obviously the period in terms of seconds, but we're going to want to convert that into SI into obviously milli or micro, right? So you got three zeros there. So this would be here would be one millisecond. So it's less than one millisecond. It's, it's 0 0.833 milliseconds. So probably better for us to even go down to microseconds. So we could say it's 833 microseconds. So an AC voltage that has a frequency of 1200 hertz, then it's completing a cycle every 833 microseconds. Okay, let's do one more like quite uh, seemingly overwhelming one, but just to kind of get with the SI units as well. So let's do, let's do calculate uh, the frequency of the um okay let's draw a waveform of the waveform if the period is 8.9 microseconds and let's draw a waveform okay so obviously the graph is like completely irrelevant the picture is completely irrelevant they just draw them and try and put you off but basically you have obviously we just need to work out the frequency so we just do f is equal to same as always one over t right which is equal to one over 8.9 microseconds okay so this is going to be a very large number one divided by 8.9 microseconds so that's zero point uh and then that's going to be five zeros one two three four five eight nine so then you have one one two three five nine and you can i suppose you can run up to six zero actually Okay, 0.55. Right. Okay, so that gives us a frequency of that large number in hertz. So that's 112,359 or 360, you could say, by rounding it up. Hertz. Or you could say it's 112 kilohertz. Cool. Okay, so hopefully I've driven that home enough and you're okay with that. So one more thing I want to get into, which goes slightly a bit deeper, but is important to know. So it's quite important to know that we can actually take, this is only applicable to sine waves, 
but we can express the period of time across a, a sine wave or across a waveform in either degrees or radians. So might, your head might be blown a bit, but don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's fairly easy to understand. We'll go through it together. So let's, uh, firstly, let's, if you remember the unit circle, if you're not comfortable with this, I suggest going back and, and watching a video on it. But let's draw a circle. Okay, so we've got the unit circle. We've got zero degrees here, right? Then we've got 180 degrees here, 270, 90, and 360. You remember this, right? Then if you think in terms of radians, you've got obviously zero radians here. You've got pi radians there. You've got two pi radians here. You've got pi divided by two here. And then you've got three pi divided by two there. So obviously you can draw a circle both in terms of degrees and also in terms of radians, right? So what we did is we actually use this unit circle and use it to express time through a, a sine wave. So we actually draw, let's say for example, we take the sine wave as starting from here, zero degrees, and we actually draw it going round like this. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's, let's draw a sine wave. Okay, so you see here we've got the sine wave starting at zero. We also start it here on the unit cycle at zero. And then what we do is we have the sine wave, it goes up here to 90 degrees here. So this corresponds to 90 degrees on the unit cycle. Then it comes back down to zero, which is here. And so this co corresponds to 180 degrees. And then it comes back across to here, which corresponds to 270 degrees. And then finally, it comes back around to zero again to restart the whole circle, or in our case, the whole sine wave back here at 360 degrees. So your mind might be blown now and you might think, what the hell, why do we do this? But don't, don't worry about it. It's not, it's, it's not difficult. So similarly, just like how we express this sine wave in terms of degrees, we also likewise express, you know, degrees to radians. It's very easy to convert between the two. So we have here at, 180 degrees we also have pi right because 180 degrees equals pi at 360 degrees we have 2 pi at 270 we have 3 pi over 2 and at 90 degrees we have pi over 2 and likewise you know we could also break it up and do 45 degrees and then that's obviously pi over 4 and we can keep doing that. We can break up the circle more and more. So we can do the same, for example, for 30 degrees here. And 30 degrees is obviously pi over 6. You don't really need to worry about memorizing, you know, converting between uh, pi and degrees. You, will, you can always just Google the unit circle and you get all of them, all of them there. But the main thing to remember here is that pi is 180 degrees, which is half of the sine wave. 360 degrees or 2 pi. So all sine waves, all of them, regardless of frequency, regardless of amplitude, regardless of period, they can all be drawn to say that the period, so the period of any sine wave is equal to 360 degrees or 2 pi. Okay? So it's like irrelevant of time, basically. The period is going to be you know, I could ask you what's the period of this sine wave and whatever it is you can just say oh Hamid it's a uh, 360 degrees or 2 pi and that's always going to be true but likewise the peak of a sine wave which we covered in the last episode here is here right this is the peak and the peak of the sine wave sine wave is always 90 degrees okay so if your mind's blown that's good and I shall see you in the next video so hopefully give you a bit of rest Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. See you in the next one.